Hi everybody, I'm Jack and this is Raw Tropical Living. Thanks for joining me today. Well, it's Monday morning and uh, we are starting out the week here on a very dark, stormy note. Um, we got storms in the area today. Um, actually, some bad storms went through Louisiana yesterday and uh, a lot of heavy stuff forecast, but it's looking already like we're probably going to miss the heavy stuff. And we're kind of in a little trough in uh, my mom's town. So almost every time there's super heavy weather, we just get rain from it and hoping that's all we get today. So I wanted to pop up um, and get to the gym first thing this morning, but I'm just kind of waiting it out. So I was just slowing down a little bit, about to get ready to meditate. And I thought I would do a video on this. I've been preparing some notes for a few days and I said, no, nah, let's go ahead and do this. So today I wanna to talk about mindfulness, the breath and beginner's mind. Um, I do videos every day. Um, now I'm sharing my meditation practice now. Most, a lot of the times it's about food, it's food related on plant-based lifestyle, the raw vegan lifestyle. Um, but I have a little bit of um, this and that in there. So if you're not already subscribed to the channel, I'd appreciate it if you go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And when you hit the subscribe button, uh, click on the little bell and check send notifications so you'll stay subscribed to the channel. Um, you know, I'm starting to share more about my meditation practice as it goes. Um, I was going to wait in the beginning because I was kind of like, my, my thought process was just like, okay, well, well, two things actually. Number one, you're just get you know, you're a beginner, you know, so you don't need to be doing too many videos on this like you're some expert or nothing, which I'm most certainly not. Um, and number two, I wanted to kind of make sure as, you know, I want to, before I like go all into it and talking about it all the time, I wanted to make sure it was going to take, because like I say, I've dabbled um, with my um, meditation practice for a lot of years and I've gone for periods of time and then, um, you know, and then I'll drop away, I'll fall away for some reason. And this time just feels really different. So this is why I've decided to, um, you know, share this um, along the way as I go. Um, and, and that's, I think there's a lot of value to that. Now, just hopping back over into food for a minute, I talk to people all the time. I'm constantly behind the scenes networking, encouraging, trying to just get people to do things, or even somebody will express they might be interested. And I tell them, do a YouTube channel on the food. And nine out of 10 times, I always get that kind of same, if it's not them actually saying it, I get that attitude. It's like, well, I want to wait until I get somewhere. I want to wait till I'm established in um, the raw vegan lifestyle or whatever it is I'm talking about. Or I want to wait until I get these results. And I can understand that, but in some ways, there's a lot of value. Everybody wants to wait. Everybody want, nobody wants to start sharing until they get to somewhere, until they have something, um, these results or this stuff to show. But there's, and, and then, then we see these things of, you know, people's stories, the before and after, and we get to hear them tell their version of how things were, how they looked, how they felt, everything else about that. But the visual, visual is very strong. We don't see that. People seem to be a little bit uh, more hesitant to share their journey from the beginning. And I think there could be so much value in that, whether it be with things like meditation, whether it be with the food. Um, so people can actually see how other people are doing it from the beginning. Um, so I'm going to talk about this in, in relation a bit to meditation today, and uh, maybe you can reply it to other things. Um, mindfulness, first of all. This is kind of... Um, the foundation of my practice right now. Now I'm not Buddhist and I don't necessarily say I would do Buddhist meditation, but the mindfulness um, tends to lend itself. Like everything I tend to read about mindfulness comes from the Buddhist uh, tradition, but you don't have to be Buddhist. You don't have to have any sort of concepts to do meditation. I find me uh, mindfulness just to be one of the simpler ways of um, doing meditation, especially for a beginner. Um, so let me, first of all, read you a little kind of description of mindfulness. I got this magazine. I always get this little magazine when I come to the States. Lion's Roar. Used to be, um, oh God, what did it? Used to be Shambhala something something. They changed their name. Um, but here's a good one here. And this is uh, a little article in this one by Noah Levine. And he's a Buddhist teacher, author, and founder of Against the Stream Buddhist Meditation Society. Um, the practice of mindfulness, also referred to as vipassana or insight meditation, is the training of attention to see clearly the three main characteristics of all reality. 
These characteristics are the truth of impermanence, the truth of unsatisfactoriness, and the truth of not-self. Through meditative training, we also come to understand that we are habitually reacting to pleasure and pain in a way that is creating suffering. We begin to respond with wisdom and compassion rather than reacting with clinging and aversion. Mindfulness of the breath and the body are only the beginning of the mindfulness practice. But even at this basic level, we begin to see the truth of impermanence with the changing sensations of each breath, um, as well as the impersonal or not-self nature of the breath and body as it breathes all by itself. Once we have established some level of present time awareness and attention to the physical sensations of the body, we undertake training to bring attention to the feeling tone of the particular experience. Every single experience has a feeling tone to it, a quality of pleasantness, unpleasantness, or neutrality that we can perceive when we are mindful. An awareness of the experience and its pleasant or unpleasant tone is essential if we are to progress on the path to freedom from suffering. Um, our habitual reaction to pleasurable experiences to cling to them, or our habitual reaction to unpleasant um, experiences to resist or push them away. Clinging and aversion, listen to this one, clinging and aversion are the cause of most of the suffering we create for ourselves and the subtle roots of all greed and hatred. That basically is mindfulness in a nutshell. Now, I also had another little passage, um, just so you're kind of, kind of find, it's kind of you'll understand the process and I do different variations on this but this is a little um, how do I practice it this is mindfulness and it's instruction by Thich Nhat Hanh um, when you sit keep your spinal column quite straight while allowing your body to be relaxed relax every muscle in your body including the muscles in your face consider smiling slightly a natural smile your smile releases relaxes all your facial muscles Notice your breathing. As you breathe in, be aware that you are breathing in. As you breathe out, notice that you are breathing out. As soon as we pay attention to our breath, then body, breath, and mind come together. Every in-breath can bring joy. Every out-breath can bring calm and relaxation. This is a good enough reason to sit. When you breathe in mindfully and joyfully, don't worry about what your sitting looks like from the outside. Sit in such a way that you feel you have already arrived. Um, if you sit regularly, it will become a habit. And that is true. Um, like I said, I did a video, um, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago now, a week ago, I lose all track of time frames, um, talking about how the, talking about the breath as an anchor, kind of in, my, in the foundation of my uh, meditation. And I'm using it so much in life. I mean, this breath thing is really... Um, I don't know. I'm going to have to at some point like really be figure out a way to expound on that a little bit because it's kind of even hard to express how big a part it's taken in my life. I find myself catching it all the time. If I find myself a little anxious, if I find myself a little keyed up, I can center myself. I can bring myself back to the moment just with that breathing. And, uh, and all this little description I just read to you, it's all about coming back to the moment. And as I had talked about that breath as the anchor, I call it the, I, the reason it's the anchor is because that anchor brings me back to the moment. That's all we have to do, no matter how distracted we get. Um, and people get, you know, when people, I, I think the reason so far the meditation is practice is going well for me too is I have experience. I'm a little bit older and I've dropped expectations this time, you know, before I, and I read stuff about it and I hear other people's like the problems that arise and how people like um, judge themselves. I'm not judging myself whatsoever. Um, you know, people tend to be like, well, it, it, I, I don't know how to meditate. Meditation today was bad. My practice sucks, this and that. And those are all concepts that you put on yourself, expectations, thinking how meditation is supposed to be. And it grows. It takes time. It takes patience. Um, I was doing a meditation last night. Um, the theme was impermanence. And um, there's a little story where a um, um, meditation student goes to the teacher and uh, talks about, uh, tells his teacher, oh my God, this last week, uh, my pre med meditation practice is terrible. It sucks. It's bad. All the meditation teacher says to him is, this will pass. Student comes back a week later. Oh, teacher, teacher, my practice is so good this week. Everything's flowing. Everything feels so good. It's clicking into place. 
meditation teacher said, this will pass. So we understand the impermanence of things when we um, do meditation. We have no expectations because of uh, the understanding of this impermanence that things are going to um, that are, are going to continually change. Um, now I have another the the third concept here that I just kind of wanted to talk about a little bit, and in a way that's not exactly what beginner's mind means, but another reason why I want to share my practice um, from the beginning like I've been doing is because there's a lot of value in beginner's mind. Let me read this to you and this can apply to a lot of things in life. Um, in the beginner's mind there are many possibilities but in the experts there are few because when we tend to become kind of experts or thinking we're experts at things we cut off possibilities. We think we know it all. We have these concepts set in our head but Beginner's mind, think of it as a child. Think of it as a baby that just sees things. The baby, the baby sees the flower. The baby doesn't have a concept of the flower. He doesn't judge the flower. He doesn't put qualifications on the flower. He sees a flower. He sees beauty or he sees eh, whatever. But it's just as simple as that, seeing through the eyes of a beginner. Um, the beginner's mind is, awaken, is an awakened mind itself, which is beyond concepts and opinions. It is the don't know mind that is the essence of meditation, and we should never lose it. Um, so, I mean, you know, be like a child. I've, you know, a lot of traditions talk about this to be childlike, to see things through the eyes of a child, to have, you know, just um, we can learn a lot from um, our children. Well, not my children, but uh, you know what I'm talking about. Um, my concept is, is not that we necessarily evolve as we go from baby to adult, but we lose a lot of things. We lose a lot of things that we had naturally as we were born, as we were babies. And don't lose that beginner's mind. So, um, this is something, like I said, I just kind of want to keep sharing it. I don't want this to be a teaching. I don't have, like, I share these little snippets, like with Thich Nhat Hanh on instruction, how to do it. But if you're interested in this, you know, go, go at the very least, go to YouTube and do a little bit of searching on meditation, mindfulness, maybe search around. Maybe the mindfulness practice isn't the one for you. Although I find that a very simple one. It's a simple one for beginners, but um, you know some people practice it a whole lifetime. There's transcendental meditation, um, which I see a lot of value in too. Um, I've, I've followed a lot of people that use this method. Um, there's Kriya Yoga, which is a mantra. I've you know I've looked at that a little bit too, and there's so many out there. But this is just like I'm just telling you. I think I've plugged into the source now. This. Um, it's kind of an outlet, a release valve. Um, it's just, it's, it's kind of the center of what I do right now. And after I get through with this video, I'm about to go sit again. So anyhow, hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you like it, please give me a thumbs up. Like I say, this is just kind of like I like, I've found something that's really been beneficial for me that's really helping me, bringing a lot to my life. And I just kind of want to share the general concepts of it, maybe to spark somebody into going out and uh, looking in this to yourself and maybe finding a little bit of peace and calm and quiet that I've been able to find. So anyhow, I will see you guys again tomorrow and love you all. Peace.